Thank you so much for joining our fireside chat. My name is Lily Pascal. I run partner marketing for Medallia. I'm joined today by two panelists. So we've got Mike Debnar uh, from Medallia, who is our principal within the retail vertical and digital innovation. And then from the Adobe side, we are joined by Chris Young, who's an industry strategist for Adobe's financial services sector. With that, let's get into it. So Chris, you know, took this directly from a conversation with you. You said moving from next best offer to next best experience. Can you elaborate on this? Yeah, I think the, the state of the union in personalization and financial services today is currently around this concept of next best offer. And that's geared towards acquisition and product sales. And, and that's kind of the mindset of the marketer. Um, and with that in mind, you know, you're working in really portions of the journey where the marketer has jurisdiction, you know, typically the public facing website, uh, maybe email, maybe paid media, but this shift is going to next best experience, which is geared towards value to the customer, not necessarily purely value to the bank. Um, and with that in mind, you're going to need a lot more data. You're going to have to connect to a lot more channels, like financial services being omni-channel, so branches and call centers. And you're going to need a lot more content to deliver personalization at scale. So it, this is the importance of our partnership between Adobe and Medallia in, in meeting that end-to-end -end journey geared towards that next best experience. Um, but I also want to add that it's going to require a mindset change as well. Marketers have to go beyond thinking how well do we sell what we make to how well do we know and serve the customer? And I think the, com the combination of our applications to build that intelligence about the consumer is, is extremely important. Yeah, and, and from the retail um, perspective, you know, you think about how customers have changed their behavior and, and just the, you know, the advent of digital and, you know, in retail tier one, tier two retailers have invested in digital. Um, those digital assets are out there. There's high adoption. Um, so consumers are going from uh, at a much higher rate, going from the online experience to the offline experience. So, for example, from the app, looking for products um, that are in stock and they're, then they'll go to the offline experience, to the brick and mortar store um, to go ahead and find those products and purchase those products. So that that, you know, you call that the customer journey. It's not that complicated in that there's only one hop there. But there's a lot of risk within that journey. And so understanding as best we can that the customer's intent being online versus their actual feet on the ground experience in the store is really where there's an opportunity um, within retail. And that takes data. And sometimes it's a little bit different data, right? Because a lot of that data um, historically has just not been um, known. Like when I walk into a store, you know, how, how do you know that I'm even there um, unless I identify and purchase something? So there's new technologies that are really helping with that um, to identify customers in store. For example, um, a lot of our clients are using in-store mode when they're app. So the app turns into like a super app when you're in the store. It provides navigation and you can check out with your phone and save time and energy. And so that type of data much to Chris's um, example, that we'll need more data, that's becoming available. And to the extent we can use that to create what I'll call as close as possible to the perfect experience for that customer. And, and what that en entails is not only the data, but taking action on the data to improve the experience. Some of that action can be um, automated. And some of it, quite honestly, is going to be still on the part of the employees in the store to be able to see that information, understand that customer journey and actually take action on it, you know, call it the analog to the digital. And I think when we're, we're getting closer to getting there, and I think that's really where we're going to see um, brands differentiate themselves. The ones that are going to be the early adopters to that, um, to, you know, that, that next best experience are going to see a, um, you know, um, a, an additional share of market and share of wallet. I think a wise man once said it, it takes a virtual village to support uh, personalization goals. So um... <laughs> like the premonition, I mean, look at, look at that, but that this is exactly, this is exactly what we mean. You know, this, this village, I, I don't think that anybody listening to this um, today can completely just reimagine the organization overnight. Uh, so a lot of it has to do with improving the way that you work together 
new ways of working is the term, and fostering better collaboration that gets you to a higher degree of customer centricity, that improves speed to market, that unlocks innovation. So this virtual vi village is what I'm talking about, is how, think about how you work with your peers and colleagues and how more efficient it could be. The one thing I wanna point out is this concept of one and done. And I know Mike and you'll agree with this, but it is an ongoing iterative uh, process. Um, and it's just, you know, the consumer change. Look how much the consumer has changed even over the last two years. And the idea is this whole concept is around enterprise agility because the consumer may change again. And this next generation may want something entirely different. It's your ability to pivot the organization to move the Titanic and pivot rapidly to meet those demands.